Come on, let's shout the name of Jesus over your life. Praise God. Here's what I know. I know this. I know that any person lost or found by Jesus can worship and praise God after something miraculous happens. I've seen it. I've seen people that have nothing to do with God want to give God praise because something miraculous has happened. I've seen that happen. But here's what I also know, that the people of God are supposed to be the kind of people that are walking close enough with God to where they don't need something to happen in order to give God praise. That whether something happens, whether it don'ts, before, after, during, in the midst of feeling brokenhearted, in the midst of being broken apart, they're the kind of people that can cause fear to leave and hope to come because the spirit of the living God is in the midst of those kind of people. Why don't you give God some praise? Worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. There's no one like him. Sunday at Authentic, the first Sunday we meet every single year, we have a time to share vision, what we see God speaking to his church, to his people, to the church as a whole. And I was sitting in this room back in October, and I, I had been praying for months up to that point, asking God, what is the vision? What is your heart for 2022? What do you see? What do you want to share? And I was sitting in this room during one of our, one of our times of prayer. How many love prayer? We were, we were in here before you were in here, of an hour before each worship experience, we're in here praying. Every Monday night we're here praying. We're going to be praying a lot to start off the year. I'm excited about it. I was in here and I was praying and the Lord just deposited supernaturally this word that I want to bring to you tonight into my heart. And if you want to turn in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 54, if you don't know where it's at, just kind of have it in the middle, plop it open in the middle, you'll be pretty close. It's going to be on the screens. You can pull it up on your phone. I want to share it with you. As you're looking for it, I, I want to give you some context about what's happening. And I'm bringing you right into this book. And, and really, it's in the, the later half of, of what's almost a, or over a 60-chapter book. And we're in chapter 54. And basically, the simple story is that God puts this word inside of a prophet. How many know you have a word inside of you you're supposed to deliver? You can call yourself a prophet or not. It doesn't matter to me. Here's what I know, that the people of God speak a word of God. That word is that same thing we were singing, that Jesus Christ brings freedom and hope and forgiveness and eternal life. And that's inside of us in the same way that we have that inside of us. God put this word inside of the prophet Isaiah. And he goes and he shares this word. And the, and the word that's happening all throughout this book named after him is the, the rebellion of the people of God and the faithfulness of the goodness of God. And so he shares throughout the book, he shares this is what happened and God's people get set free and then they turn from him and they go back to their wickedness and they, then they cry out to God and God saves them again and it's just this movement and, and who they get turned over and what's going to happen and when they sin, this is what's going to happen. And finally we get to chapter 54 and really what's happening here is God is saying through Isaiah, he's saying let me give you a picture of how good and how faithful and how much I want to bless you once you decide your rebellion is finally behind you. 
How many would love for in 2022 the rebellion from God to finally be behind them? For all those things that we're wrestling with to be behind them, or at least one of those major things to be behind me, that at least I can be free from that and free from this, believing that it's not by my strength, it's by Jesus Christ. That the blood spilled out on the cross was worth something in redeeming us because now we're really living for Jesus. I believe that can be for us. And he brings them to this place in chapter 54. And I titled today's message, What I See. What I See. I wonder what you pictured your last year would be like. Did it turn out how you pictured it? Probably not. I wonder what you see for 2022. And I, and I wonder this. I wonder if God might actually do that, that you see. Because what I see is a spirit of revival moving through the church. What I see is, is people saved, baptized, and set free like never before. What I see is the people of God standing up in their rightful place and declaring the good news of the gospel in the workplace, in the city, in the schools, in families, to loved ones. That's what I see. Let me show you how Isaiah shared it in chapter 54. He says this, Sing, barren woman. You who never bore a child, burst into song. Shout for joy, you who were never in labor. Because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. In the time, having children was everything. There was nothing more important than that because... You would work, you would gain this, you would have that property or whatever cows and goats you would have and stuff and ropes and little things, little knickknacks. And then you would die and who would you pass it to? And what would it be for? And so the people of God knew that it was, it was to have children, to have a legacy to pass things on to that they might go from generation to generation. And Isaiah the prophet is speaking not only to women who are not pregnant or pregnant, but speaking to a, to a whole generation of people, to a whole group of people, saying this, those who are like the barren woman. Talking to males and females, young and old. Saying, what, what God has for you is to shout for joy and to sing and to give praise even though you're in a moment feeling desolate as if you're going to be living in abundance. Singing so much to, from, to and from the, the, the woman who cannot have children, who can produce no legacy, to say, that's not where you're going to stay. Because you, the one who is desolate, the one who has nothing, the one who is barren, the one who right now is producing no spiritual fruit in your life, the one who right now is only feeling lonely, the one who right now is brokenhearted, the one who right now has relationships that are all dysfunctional, the one who right now is going through hardship, that one soon will be on the other side and will be saying that I have even greater blessing than she who has a husband and plenty of kids. Now I have even more blessing than that. The text in itself is about expectations before reality can become reality. Because once reality is there, everyone can see it for what it is. Since like October, people have been asking me, how are you doing? Which they ask me that all the time, right? They ask you that, how are you doing? Since like October, I've been telling people this. This is what I've been saying to some people. If you've heard this, sorry. I've been saying, I'm so blessed that when everybody finds out how blessed I am, they're not going to know what to do. That's what I've been saying. 
You know why I've been saying that? Because I got a bigger picture for all that God has. And I realized he's got so much goodness and grace and mercy for the people who want to walk with him. He's got so much faithfulness ready to pour out on the people who are, who are wanting to walk with him. And then I, I realized that's really where I'm at. Regardless of what I have or how much money or how little or if I have food in the pantry or not, it really is the reality that I'm choosing to walk in, that I'm so blessed because of who God is. But sometimes we're so in it that when we get to this spot and we say, well, what I see is we begin to speak negativity over our life. Oh, well, I read that. I hear you, man, and that's really great. The, the barren woman's going to have lots of kids, and that's really awesome for you. Good, but here's the deal. What I see is I'm just sick. I'm just hurting. I'm just sick of being at church. I'm just sick of trying to serve God. I just can't do the things, or I just don't know if I have enough. Or You, you see your point of view, right? And sometimes we have to get around some people that see what we want to see, that see what God wants to see. I remember when we were walking through this, me and my wife, in our own life with the situation that is actually like this. We wanted to have a baby, and for a year we couldn't have a baby. Well, for a long time we couldn't have a baby. Then we tried for a year, we couldn't have a baby. Then we had a baby, and we miscarried the baby. Then after that, for several months, we weren't supposed to try to have a baby. And so here we are wanting a baby and not having one. And before Baby Maverick was Baby Maverick, there were some friends that came alongside of us, and they gave us a journal. Prayers for baby Shirley. There was no baby Shirley. You need to understand, just the thought of baby Shirley was only heartbreak for us. But they, they wrote on this, they bought this, they gave us this. So, you know why? Because they had been through it. And now they were on the other side. And they had a baby. And they knew the joy and the blessing and the burden and the growth of having a baby. And so they were able to say, you know what? Let me take my faith and put it with your faith. And here's some journals and some prayers. Why don't you start writing in this? Now, they didn't write in it for me. They couldn't do anything with, with my faith. But what they could do was come alongside of me and say, you know what? I've been there. I've seen it. And let me tell you what I see. I see you having a baby. Who you're around in 2022 matters. Because we get to places sometimes, this is just life, where we're feeling so empty and so lacking on faith. And what we need is we need people who are filled with faith, so much so that their faith is running over and encouraging us. That is giving us journals we can write in and have hope and expectation. We need to make sure in 2022 we're around the right people. We need to make sure in 2022 we're in the right places. There's places you can go that will strip you of your hope in Jesus. And there's places you can go that will fill you up to fullness, that you're ready to go. Just because the people that are in that place, it's in 2022, we need to make sure we're doing the right activities. There's activities we can do that will pull us down and drain us and leaving us so empty. And there's other activities we can do to come into the presence of God that will fill us up. People filled with faith. To encourage us when we're down in our lowest. That's where, we, that's where this, this, this text is coming from. It's writing to the people of God when they're in the lowest place. Talking about desolation and being barren and having nothing. And saying even in the midst of that, what I'm about to do. Do you, do you hear? God is saying, what I see in the people. He goes on. Okay, we're on verse 1. Hone this in, Mac. Verse 2. He says, enlarge the place of your tent. I know you haven't had children yet. But enlarge the place of your tent in preparation for them. I know you don't know what your gifting is yet. I know you don't know what God is going to do through that hole in your heart yet. I know that yet we cannot see the fullness of what God might do in 2022. But what he's saying is enlarge the place of your tent even before you have a family to get ready for the family and grace that I'm about to bring to you. Stretch your tent curtains wide, it says. Do not hold back. 
Lengthen your cords, strengthen your states. How many times does God call us to do something? Go to talk to them, go over here, give this, say that, serve them, love them, hug them, speak a word, be encouraged, read our Bible, give some, whatever it is. How many times does God call us to do something? And the first thing that we try to do is negotiate how we're going to hold something back from that. What does it say in the text? It says, it says, do not hold back. Here's what I see. I see a people of God that have decided they're not going to hold back things from God anymore. That truly, when we're singing the song, that we're laying down our life at your feet, that we truly mean it. Because only in that will we find the image of what God wants to see in us. Only in that will we go from glory to glory of where God wants us to be. Fine, you said a prayer, and you got in some water, and you got dunked. But you don't get to just do that and live however you want. Because it says in God's word that we give up our life. It's no longer ours, but it is his. The old us is gone. 2 Corinthians 5, the new is now what lives. And if that is true, then we're walking with Jesus, and that's it. And when he says give, we give. And when he says serve, we serve. And when he says love, we love. And when he says go, we go. When he says stay, we stay. We do what he says, and we stop holding back because we can't be holding back from God and at the same time wondering why he's not coming through. It's opportunity in 2022 to expand. To expand God's work in your life. To expand the work of God through you into your family, into your school, into your work, into your city. It's an opportunity to, for, for God to expand in you, in your household, in your mind, in your spiritual life, in your finances in your spiritual gifting, it's time for God to expand. And 2022 is an opportunity for that. But what I learned about expansion is it takes work. You can do just about anything that you want to do when it comes to building. When you're building around here, you know, you may say, well, I live in a one-bedroom apartment. How can we make it a two? Let me tell you, there's always a way. We'll throw a little lift right there, build a platform, boom, punch out a wall, move this, throw in a door, just top, drop a toilet right there, put some plumbing, boom, throw a switch. You got a room. I put plumbing in it, no problem. We can do this. I told my wife the other day, I had got out of the shower. I was, you know, when you get in the shower, you, get, you can get to thinking about some great stuff. If you're having writer's block or thinker's block, just hop in the shower, bring a notepad. I, uh, my wife got a little waterproof recipe book. It's for recipes. I was thinking about maybe bring it to the shower. It's waterproof and have it for my ideas in there. Neither here nor there. I got out of the shower and I told her, I said, you know, I was thinking maybe in our next house when we're, you know, because, we, you know, we'll probably remodel it. I was like, maybe we'll go down. You know, everybody goes out and up. Maybe we'll go under the dirt. Yeah. Like you walk into the house, you go into the living room, all of a sudden left hand turn, boom, underground. Why not? You can do anything. And, you know, maybe it's more work. Maybe it's not. Probably is. But regardless, it'll be work. Because you don't just get a house and then say, you know what? I'd like to have two extra rooms here. Boom, two extra rooms up here. No. You plan, you save, you get money, you get somebody who can do it, somebody skilled, somebody more than me. I just built a bathroom and a loft right outside of an apartment. You don't want that. <laughs> Probably going to fall apart. And then you put work and effort into it, and expansion begins to happen. This is how things work. And they're the same thing in the, in the natural as it is the spiritual. When expansion begins to happen inside of your heart, what is, what is the place of dwelling? What is the tent? What is that? It's not, it's not talking about your house. That's not the primary thing. That may be an overflow. The primary thing is right here. This is the dwelling of the Holy Ghost inside of us. When expansion is taking place, it must take place first inside of us before anything else. Blessing in this physical realm will only be a byproduct of what's happening on the inside. And it may happen or it may not happen. But on the inside, blessing will take place because our God is good. But on the inside, as, as God says, strengthen the cords of your heart, move the tent pegs, begin to strengthen the stakes, don't hold back. He's talking about in here. That is not going to be easy. It's not just going to happen overnight. It's important 
in 2022 that we keep our spiritual practices. Your religion, you don't need that. You know why? Because religion says if you'll work hard enough, you'll earn something. You can't, you won't. And the good news is you don't have to because you don't earn inheritance. You don't. You're given inheritance. And our Father, God, has given us inheritance that we cannot and do not need to earn. That's why you can just you can go ahead and throw your religion away. It doesn't matter. But your spiritual practices matter. And a lot of people, a lot of people keep those together. They're not together. They're different. Spiritual practice is not earning. Spiritual practice is because we love Jesus and we serve Jesus. This is how we act. This is how we live. This is what we do. And in 2022, there's going to be some awesome opportunities through Authentic and not for you to say, I take seriously my spiritual practices in 2022, and they're going to change the way that I live my life. This next week, not as in tomorrow, but the week after that, we're going to start a church-wide fast together, just like we do every year. I'm so excited about it. We created this booklet for it. It has a journal in it. Has a has a Devo for every single day. And we're going to start it in two Mondays. So next Sunday when you come, you're going to get one of these. And we're going to be fasting together. It's a Daniel fast. It's going to be so exciting. There's lots of information online. You can find out all of that. You're going to get this. You're going to go through it. And here's the cool thing. Every single night, starting that Monday night, we're going to be up here at 7 o'clock praying. I would love for you to be here. Come to every single one. Come to one. Come to as many as you can. I don't care. But here's what I know, that the people who come together and pray are going to encounter the spirit of the living God. And the spiritual practices that we do matter and have impact in 2022. And when we decide and make a commitment to what God is doing, then he begins to say, you know what that is? That's strengthening the cords. You know what that is? That's, that's strengthening the stake pegs. You know what that is? That's lengthening out the curtains. You know what that is? That's getting the wall prepped and ready for what God wants to do. That's preparing the space for expansion about what God wants to do. Even before he has done it, even before we may know what it is, it's getting preparation ready so that God can move in the ways he wants to move. Because many of us, we got to to expand. We've decided in our mind that, that on Sundays from, from 4.45 when, when, we're, when we're getting here early to serve all the way until 6.15 if we're staying to the end because we really love people all the way until 6.15 and maybe tonight, even later than that, we're going to be here celebrating a wedding. That God, in that two hours, in that hour and a half, you move, God. That's, what, that's the parameters we've given him. God, give me all the, all the information and all the wisdom and all the worship and all the songs and all the preaching because I got, I got, I'm here for an hour and a half, God, and that's what I got. And in that hour and a half, I'm giving all of myself. But the moment I walk out of those doors, I'm giving all of myself back to me. A lot of people wouldn't say it because it sounds tacky and our whole life is supposed to be Jesus. But watch the things that we do and then decide who, who, who owns your life. Who owns your calendar? Who owns your money? Who owns what you, what you decide? Because it has to be Jesus. And we need to expand that ability to say, God, I'm not just giving you one and a half hours out of my week. All day, every day. Speak to me in my dreams. Wake me up at night. Oh, you don't want to be woken up at night by the living God? Wake me up in the morning. Talk to me during the day. Speak to me while I'm driving to work. Talk to me while I'm at work. Speak to me when I'm with my family. God, take it all. I don't want to hold back. I want to be with you all the time. And it's spiritual practices like fasting and praying and seeking God that many times can get us back to that place that God originally had us at where we believe in expansion. We believe that God wants to grow us. We believe that he has something good for us where we can say to people around us, even in the midst of hardship and doubt, well, what I see and begin to speak life over our life and theirs. I, uh, brought a box of plastic tent stakes You know, you put them in the ground, hold your tent. And I was thinking about where we place these, you know, in our life. 
like what our situation is right now. And many times, like as you're hearing this and as your, your faith is stirring up, you think, oh, yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you've, you've already decided before you came where this went in the ground. You've already made a decision how, how big you're believing and where it goes. And what I'm saying is, I'm saying is, take it a few steps further. Expand it a little more. Believe in something a little bigger that God can do. And what does the text say? Don't hold back. Maybe it kind of scares you how far out you might want to put this or what you might want to do with it when it comes to your spiritual life and your own heart and believe in what God might do. Maybe you take this as a, as a symbol and you stick it in the ground somewhere. Maybe you put it in your yard, your, your, your own front yard, to declare, my house will serve the Lord. Maybe you stick it under your bed to say, God's going to speak to me in my dreams. Maybe you bring it over to someone's house you don't know and you stick it in their yard because you're believing that God's going to work in their life. Maybe you take it to a house that you're believing for and you stick it in the ground. Before we moved into the house we moved into, we live in it right now. We moved in it about five years ago. Five years before that, we snuck in the backyard a couple times and prayed over the house. Nobody lived there. It was for sale. I couldn't afford it. <laughs> and there's some steps in the backyard, and we snuck in there a couple times. Asked my wife, and we prayed, Lord, give us this house. Amen. Five years passed, and it didn't happen. Five years later, we pulled up in front. Be careful where you put this, because it's not just a stake. Maybe you write something on it. Maybe you do something with it. Maybe you give it to somebody. Maybe you put it in your car somewhere you can see it. But it's somewhere to remember that what you're doing is you're allowing God to expand your faith in your life. That you believe in the word of God when he says, I got a picture of what I want to show you. You believe in it, you buy into it, and you don't hold back, and you go for it. I remember when we were just starting Authentic. We were meeting in my house. And we were looking for a place to meet. And I was looking... I was looking hard for a place to meet. And let me tell you something about finding a place to meet when you're a church and you got no money. It's not that easy. <laughs> and there was this one church in the city called Crossroads where Pastor Joe pastored. And I called him up and I said, hey, can, can we meet in your church on a Sunday night? Use your building on a Sunday night. And he's like, of course, like, you know, it's, it's nothing. Like, of course, yeah, we don't meet in there on Sunday nights. It's yours. Meet in there. All the stuff. Use all the stuff. Use the coffee beans. Use all the toilet paper. Just use whatever you want. Just, just do it. Yeah, it's great. I'm so glad. And I was so blessed because I had actually called several other people and asked them, and I didn't get a yes. You would think that just anybody would want you to meet in their place, but let me just tell you something. They don't. And Pastor Joe in Crossroads said, yes, we met in there. We had an awesome meeting. It was an incredible turnout. But more important than that, the spirit of the living God was there. And before I even left that night, Pastor Joe called me and he said, hey, I heard that it was an incredible night. He said, I want you to know that any Sunday night you want to be in this building, it's yours. And I said, well, how about next month? He said, yeah. And the next month turned into the next month, which turned into every single Sunday night. The first year of meeting there, charging us nothing to meet there. The second year, he said, hey, you're growing as a church. The Lord's blessing you. You should pay something. What, he said, this is what he said, what do you want to pay? So we started paying rent. Everything we paid rent when we moved out, him and his church wrote it back to us. It wasn't about it. It was just about growing responsibility and teaching the church how to grow up because he had been pastoring there for 19 years. Started the church. And just a few months back, a few, sorry, a few weeks back, Pastor Joe announced his resignation as the lead pastor of Crossroads. Stepping back, and I believe stepping into a new season of ministry. And I went there on that Sunday. I hustled over there Sunday morning because I had to be here at 11. I got there at 10, and I wanted to hear him, and I wanted to celebrate with him. And I surprised him by going. And afterwards, he came up to me. And put his arms on me like Pastor Joe would do. And he said, the Lord spoke to me and said, if you came today, that it was a sign that you were supposed to be my pastor. 
and I want you to know I want to be coming to Authentic. I want you to be my pastor, and I want to pour in my gifting at Authentic. And this is the guy that's pastored me, pastored our church for the last several years. And I think honest truth could be at any church he wants to in the city. For 19 years, he pastored Crossroads, the church that he started. And for probably a decade and a half to two decades, he did ministry in the city before that. And any pastor in any church would be like, oh, yeah, we'd love to have Pastor Joe. And not just as you want to come here and want to be part of what God is doing, but he wants to be one of the pastors here as just a gift and a blessing. So he's coming on the team to be the pastor of coaching, counseling, and care. So if you're, if you're married, getting married, want coaching, want counseling, want care, this is your guy. And not only that, if you called any, I think this, if you called any pastor in the city and you said, hey, who is, who is the best counseling pastor in the whole city? I believe my whole heart, Every single pastor would say, Pastor Joe. And this is where he wants to be. This is where he wants to take his stake and stick it in the ground and say, God, let's do something great. Decades of ministry experience and life experience and church experience, and he wants to come alongside me and whisper expertise into my ear. And I can do whatever I want with it. And when I disagree with him, he doesn't even care. That's, there's not a lot of people like that. I want us to begin to believe bigger for what God's going to do. Amen. Wherever God's telling you to, wherever you feel like God's telling you to put that stake, make sure it's not twice as far. Make sure. Don't do it if it's not him. Whatever God's putting in your heart, make sure it's not twice as big. Whatever God's stirring in your heart, make sure the impact's not twice as great. Just make sure. Because sometimes we're used to dreaming so small because our picture of God isn't as big as we really thought it was. But let me tell you, he's even bigger. He's even greater. I want to give an opportunity for some of you that may want to, to come get one of these tent stakes. Like I said, you may want to attach a piece of paper to it that says something. I'm going to ask the band if you did come up and help us in a time of response. Not as, a, not as a place of religion or earning something, but as a spiritual practice to say, God, I'm going to take this seriously. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek you. And you know, as I'm, as I'm up here and I'm, I'm the, the, the title of the, of the sermon is what I see and I'm declaring what I see and, and how God is going to move in his people and I believe he's going to bring restoration to families and hope and salvation and love. I believe in, in that new marriages are being birthed. I believe that, that people in, in the physical are getting pregnant. I believe in the spiritual getting pregnant of, of with great expectation of what God wants to do. And some of you in the room are saying, I don't see anything. I see nothing. I want to make sure that you're here next week because we're starting an awesome new collection on the life of Joseph in the Old Testament in Genesis. And the first part of Joseph's life, if you know it or if you don't, is about his visions and his dreams. And I want to invite you into that process so that whether or not you're seeing dreams and visions or getting pictures from God or you can see what God's doing, whether that's happening or whether it's not, that it would grow in its capacity. And so if you're saying, I don't, even, I don't even see any of that. I don't even know when I read the text, I don't see anything. Then make sure you're here next week so that you can hear that. You can hear this word and, and begin to learn about this scripture verse and begin to see what God wants to do in your life because I believe it is something so great. Here's what it says in verses three and four. It says, you will spread out, talk about advancement. You will spread out to the right and to the left and your descendants will dispossess nations. Meaning, other people had land, and what God is doing through you is disrupting that and turning it back over to the kingdom, because the kingdom of God is meant to own it all. This isn't selfishness for you. This is advancement for the kingdom. Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. What a promise. 
You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. Your, your, your future in 2022 is going to be so good that your 2019, 2020, and 2021 scars are going to be forgotten and eliminated and so far in the past because of the goodness that God is doing that it's going to be so great. You're not even going to be able to remember those vague memories of the pain that was there before. So this week, maybe a new phrase for us is to declare over our lives and those around us, to declare this, what I see, fill in the blank. Stop letting other people fill it in with doubt and hate and hopelessness and discouragement and start taking control and saying, you know what? What I see is life. What I see is hope. What I see is salvation. I know that's happened in your marriage, but let me just tell you what I see. What I see is restoration happening. What I see is healing taking place. What I see is the people of God standing up in their rightful place, declaring out the goodness of the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. So I want to invite you right now. Would you go ahead and stand up? See, try to stop them. I want to invite you right now to come down to the front, if it's what you want, and to take one of these tent stakes and prayerfully consider this week, where might this go? God, what are you calling me to do? What do you see in my life? As you come down, I want to pray over you. God, I thank you right now for speaking and giving vision to your children, both young and old, both new and mature. God, that you are speaking to your people, you're opening up their eyes, you're opening up their ears, and you're giving them vision like never before. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give us insight. Give us wisdom. Father God, I pray over every single one of these tent pegs, Lord, as an act of faith, spiritual practice. Would we declare what we see in the kingdom because of your goodness and your goodness alone? In Jesus' name we pray. Man, thank you guys for joining us right here online for a powerful worship experience. And guys, we are full swing into the new year and we're starting off this new year strong. Come on, what I wanna do is I wanna invite you guys, wherever you are, whether you're in Pennsylvania, whether you're across the world, whether you're on the East Coast, West Coast, wherever you are, I wanna invite you guys into something that we do as a family here at Authentic, which is Fast 365. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you over to the app so that you can learn all all about it. On the app, you'll find all the information, all the resources, all the tools that you'll need to know how we fast here. But it is a powerful thing to do. Please prayerfully consider it. We're starting the fast tomorrow. Don't miss this opportunity to start your year off strong by fasting. And I want to invite you guys to give. If you want to give, there's a couple of ways you can give. You can go to authentic.church and give under the give tab, or you can give through Venmo. Hey, I love you guys. I'm praying for you guys and I'll see you soon.